flames, just like the ones behind us, tearing through your home while you sleep. In this instance, three little words could help save your life. Close the door. Tonight, an NBC5 investigation finds new research that shows sleeping with your bedroom door closed can buy life-saving seconds if you are trapped in a burning house. Senior investigative reporter Scott Friedman has spent months talking with researchers, even suiting up with firefighters to show us how a closed door does more than just keep smoke out of a room. Scott? Meredith and Brian, if you wake up, the smoke detector is going off and the house is on fire, the first thing you want to do is get out. But what if you can't? You're about to see how something as simple as closing the bedroom door at night could buy you extra seconds. Time to find another way out of the fire or time to survive until firefighters can reach you. In the darkness, a raging fire. You literally have seconds to get out of there. Inside this house, a young boy and girl trapped. If I could go back in time, I would beg my brother to close his door that night. Beg him so that he could be here. Lexi King lost her brother Oliver that night 11 years ago in Corpus Christi. Her parents died in the fire too. They were just amazing people. And I look back to my childhood with such gratefulness. Lexi believes a closed bedroom door helped save her life. She always slept with her door closed, but like a lot of kids, her brother liked to keep his open. So with his door open, he didn't have the extra minutes that you did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had time to take a deep breath. I had that extra oxygen that he didn't have anymore. Firefighters have long known a closed door helps keep smoke out. But new research is showing how it also changes the flow of heat and toxic gases in a fire. If you can't get out of your house, the best thing you can possibly do is get a closed door between you and where the fire is. Best possible thing. Best possible thing you can do. If you are trapped in your home, you want a closed door between you and the fire. Researcher Steve Kerber has conducted hundreds of fire studies at underwriters labs, working with fire departments across the country. The setup here... You can Take a look at this test. Kerber's team lights a fire in a room at the bottom of the screen, and they start a timer. It's a small flaming fire on the corner of the sofa. The house is an open floor plan, like many newer homes in Texas, with a great room that opens up here to the second floor. Upstairs, there are two bedrooms, one with the door open, the other closed. Now fast forward. A minute and a half into the fire, smoke is already traveling up over that second floor balcony and into the bedroom with the open door. At three minutes, the open door room is filling with thick black smoke. Three minutes into the fire, you can't see anything in there. Three minutes, it goes black. But look at the other room with the closed door. The air stays clear longer. At five minutes, there's still some visibility, but you can't see anything in the rest of the house. Over and over and over again, the difference between closed and open is dramatic. And it's not just smoke. A closed door keeps out dangerous heat. So uh, This is about as real world as it's going to get. It's going to be really, really vision impaired. To show you, we suited up with the Fort Worth Fire Department. This goes over the back of your head. At their new state-of-the-art training facility. Wearing air packs and safety gear, firefighters light a fire in a hallway outside a bedroom. I'm inside that bedroom with Lieutenant Kyle Faulkner. Using a thermal imaging camera, we can see the door is glowing from the heat of the fire out in the hallway. What's the temperature on the other side of this door right now? On the other side of the door, the temperature is approximately 600 degrees. But the door is such an effective barrier that inside our room, the temperature is only about 100 degrees. Hot, but still survivable. To see how big an impact the door has, we're going to open it now to show you how the temperature changes. So you can see just fine in here. There's just a little smoke coming in around the edges, but watch what happens when we open the door. Immediately, we see smoke, and the room gets hotter. With the door open and the smoke and heat coming in, the room temperature quickly rises to about 150 degrees. Without protective gear, the room would not be survivable for long. So it's not just the smoke that that door is blocking, it's the heat too. Exactly. What that door does is it stops the movement of heat into a cooler area. In the department's fire simulator building, they show us another example. 
Right outside a bedroom door, they simulate a furniture fire. The simulator does not create smoke, but it gives us a clear picture of how heat travels in a fire. Behind a door, right next to the fire, they show us again the difference the door makes. They open it and the thermal imaging camera detects a rapid temperature increase of hundreds of degrees. Now we're part of that environment. That heat moves in, the flame moves in, and the heavy smoke would start to bank down. Even under the worst of conditions, the, the thinnest wood possible could buy you minutes. We've had temperatures of 2,000 degrees on one side of the door and 100 degrees on the other side. UL's research found even the cheapest hollow core door may last up to five minutes before fire burns through it, and a solid wood door could last 10 minutes or more. How big a difference does five or 10 minutes make when it comes to someone's survival? 30 seconds can make a difference. And seconds may be more important today than ever. UL's research has shown materials we use to build houses and furniture today make fires burn faster than decades ago. With everything we've seen in the studies, there's no doubt that I would suggest that people sleep with their doors closed. Kerber says parents worried about not hearing their kids at night should use a baby monitor. And if the kids are scared of sleeping with the door closed... Keep the door cracked. Wait till the kid goes to sleep, and the last thing you do before you go to sleep is just pull it closed the rest of the way. Definitely get those extra seconds because of how precious those extra seconds are. So, yeah. In Lexi King's case, a missing smoke detector battery also cut the time her family had to react. But she used the extra seconds she had behind a closed door to plan her escape, grabbing a wet towel to cover her face and then crawling to her parents' room. She and her mom jumped from a window. Her mom died in the fall. Her dad was lost trying to reach her brother in his smoke-filled bedroom. I'm able to graduate school. I'm able to have a family, get married, things like that. And that's not what my brother is able to do. And that was the difference between a closed and open door. Now, despite the research showing closed doors can save lives, our investigation found some of the nation's leading fire safety groups are not widely sharing that message. Tomorrow night, we ask why as our investigation continues. Brian and Meredith, a closed bedroom door does not replace smoke detectors. Firefighters remind us you need smoke detectors inside and outside of every sleeping area in your house and also have an escape plan and practice it with your family and close that bedroom door. I have three to close when I get home tonight. I, I would have thought it was the opposite. Yeah. yeah. All right, Such a simple you. thing. I thank know. you, Scott.